Hello, Gun Nation. Big Johnson coming at you. All right, here at Texas Gun Experience. And uh, y'all have all uh, kind of talked about it on the live chat. If you tune in for the live chat, it is uh, the Gun Nation chat. But I did go ahead and uh, shoot it for the first time. It does have the Radical 18-inch uh, 223 Wild Barrel. This is the stainless steel heavy barrel. It does have this kind of little brake thing they put on there. It's, it's not perfectly timed, but you know, it seemed to work correctly. I had this lower at home. I had the trigger that's a POF four and a half pound trigger and actually it feels lighter than that. It feels really good. I had this Hogue stock. I had the buffer, to, uh, the buffer tube. Um, again, the lower, I had the whole complete parts kit, had everything. Of course, I had the BCG, I had charging handles. Uh, even had this uh, Seekins uh, extended safety, had the grip. The only thing I had to buy for this are your trigger anti-walk keepers, a buffer spring. I actually had the buffer, so I had to buy the buffer spring and a castle nut. Those are the only three parts to complete this whole rifle that I did not have. So that's not a big deal. This is a forge lower. It's made in Oklahoma by some company, I think D17 or something. This is the first time I've ever used it, but it seems to be pretty nice. Shot fine. I ran three mags or I'm sorry, two and a half mags. I ran 55, uh, 62, and some more 55. Of course, it does not have an optic on it. I was strictly running it for function. Seemed to function fine. Uh, no issues there. I had that thing smoking. I did double taps, you know, and of course I kept it low, uh, pulled the target in, hit all the paper just by point shooting it. Uh, I was shooting it at 15 yards, but again, only for function. Seems to be the gas block is working correctly. I did check to where it's ejecting and even pulled back and had somebody verify it. And it is hitting high right here on kind of like right there on the plate on the little deflector so i'll kind of you can see the marks so that's where it's hitting so it's actually ejecting you know probably about the four or five o'clock position but it's ejecting really hard hitting the top and then it's deflecting off but i did pull away from the walls and had somebody verified it was a range officer it was done safely but did have, uh, you know, we were checking to where I could pull my head and he could look at it. So it is a little high on the deflector, not right in the center. So could need a little heavier buffer, maybe not. It's just got the standard buffer in it that I had at home. Uh, but, you know, stock works great. Everything works great. I like the length of it. Could get my hand way out there for a C-clamp. It's gonna be kind of a coyote gun. I am gonna be putting a scope on it that I already have. It's a primary arms three by 15 by 50. It's a HUD. Yeah, they don't even make it anymore, I don't think. I've had it so long. Just got the little Magpul K2 grip on it. Uh, like I said, I had all these things. The POF trigger is a four and a half pound trigger. That's what it's marked as. And it's just one of the little uh, you know, cartridge triggers. Uh, but actually it feels lighter than that, probably because you can, and I really like a flat trigger and this is you know, not a super big curve. So I can actually get farther down on it. That's probably helping with a little bit of the leverage, but I didn't know about this trigger. I just had this trigger. Um, but on this rifle, the trigger actually feels really good. So I'll probably keep it in there, but just wanted to show it. You know, I talked about it on my live chat. If you tune in for the live chat, it's the Gun Nation chat. And I kind of showed some of the parts that I was gonna be using and stuff like that. Just to let you know, I usually build my uppers or excuse me, usually build my lowers and I've built uppers before. However, arthritis is not fun. Little springs are not fun. And when I build lowers, I've always built them inside of a bag in case you lose those little stupid springs. If y'all, you know, if you've built them, you know it. But I just went ahead and had the gunsmith, the Texas Gun Experience build it. Uh, just to save me some pain and agony of arthritis, uh, we all go through it and the little damn springs bouncing all over the place. So I just paid him to do it. Not a big deal. But anyway, it's actually done. Just don't have the scope on it. One thing I don't have also is I don't have a cantilever 30 millimeter uh, mount. I have all kinds of flat 30 millimeters, American Defensive actually. I have like four of those things. 
but I don't have any more cantilever 30 degree mounts. I have one, but it's a piece of crap. It's like one of those eBay specials and I'm not gonna use it. But, uh, so I will have to buy a mount. I just don't know which one I'm gonna get yet. But anyway, this is it. So ran these through it and it functioned perfectly. Don't know about the ejection again, but it's, I mean, I had not one issue. I also checked all of the brass to make sure I didn't have any weird, weird dents or, you know, crushing of the brass or anything like that. So when the pile of brass was on the floor, I went through all of it and, you know, just kind of checked different spots, about six different uh, shells, found nothing wrong. So I think she's good to go. You know, I'm still gonna be shooting it. As far as break, break the barrel, you know, seasoning the barrel you know how people do like one shot and then let it wait and clean it one shot two shots or three shots then clean it cool it do all that crap i don't believe in doing that honestly for an ar-15 type it's not a precision gun even though this is supposedly a match upper let me know your opinion is that wrong did i do something stupid blah 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 i don't have any way to check the accuracy because i have no damn scope on it but I was checking strictly for function. So far, so good. But I'll report back. I just wanted to show this. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them below. And remember, an unarmed nation is a very weak nation, so we all got to carry on.